Now to the war in Afghanistan. NATO officials say three American troops have been killed in southern Afghanistan, the center of the growing Taliban-led insurgency. CBS News correspondent Mandy Clark has more. A spokesman for the commanding general in Afghanistan, Stanley McChrystal, says the Taliban are moving into new areas, but denies insurgents are winning the war. General McChrystal told the Wall Street Journal, coalition forces face an aggressive enemy now that the Taliban is moving into new regions like northern and western Afghanistan. They hold greater sway over the population in some places. Looking at all of that in concert, um, one may say that uh, the Taliban is doing quite well. General McChrystal also warned that casualty figures would remain high for months as forces push further into Taliban strongholds in the south. His comments come as a top military advisor called for 45,000 extra U.S. troops to combat the insurgency. That would bring the American military presence in Afghanistan to about 100,000. Insurgent attacks have increased 60 percent over the last eight months alone, and with the presidential elections just nine days away, the threat is only expected to increase. Now back to you. Mandy Clark in Kabul this morning. Joining us now is Richard Haas, president of the Council of Foreign Relations and the author of 12 books on foreign policy. His latest is War of Necessity, War of Choice. Welcome back to the broadcast. Thanks, Harry. July was by far the deadliest month for U.S. and coalition troops in Afghanistan. U.S. is basically doubling its forces there, it has been ramping up to eventually double the forces there. With this difficult enemy to fight, the Taliban, does the U.S. have any good options available? There are no good options, if by good you mean something that in the short run is going to turn this thing around. That's simply not in the cards. We're looking at something very long and very difficult. I would say this is Barack Obama's biggest foreign policy gamble, what I would describe as his war of choice. Essentially, he's increasing U.S. forces. He's trying to push the Taliban back. He wants to buy time and space to build up the police forces and the armed forces of the government af of Afghanistan. The real question is, how well does this work? Will the Afghans, in a sense, prove able to be built up? And will we, the United States, have the staying power? We're not talking about months, Harry. We're talking about years, conceivably even a decade. Because when this war first started in 2001, after the 9-11 attacks, U.S. forces went in. There were all kinds of promises of rebuilding infrastructure and all of this that was left to the wayside as the United States went, went to fight in Iraq. Now left to fester all of this time is the problem even worse now than it was six or seven or eight years ago? Uh, the short answer is yes. And part of the tragedy, I think, is what we're now doing today in 2009, we could and should have done in 2002. It wouldn't have been easier then, but it would have been less difficult then. So yes, the Taliban have staged a, a comeback. And we've essentially lost six or seven years. The Afghan government, rather than having gained ground, in some ways lost ground. It's corrupt. It's lost support of the people. Drug production is at record highs. And it's about to be reelected again. Uh, you're going to have an election in about 10 days, August 20th. I don't know if the Karzai government will win the first round, but ultimately he's likely to be reelected. But he doesn't enjoy a lot of enthusiasm. It's, uh, it's corrupt. It's not terribly competent. They don't have a lot to show for, 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 for five years in power. This Obama plan to go in, pacify the country, then get the police built up, the Afghan army built up, which I think it's going to be a much more difficult job than even the Iraqi army was. Sure. Is any of this really doable? Uh, again, it's doable, but it's going to be extre extremely slow. There's going to be setbacks. American casualties are going to go up. A big question is to what extent Pakistan continues to be a sanctuary. It's hard enough to win the war in Afghanistan in Afghanistan, but if they continue to have, the Taliban, continue to have a sanctuary in neighboring Pakistan, it's almost impossible to prevail. And again, I keep coming back to the war here. Wars are not simply fought on a battlefield. They're also political. And it's a big question whether Barack Obama, given everything else he has to face domestically, given everything else he has to face internationally, including an unraveling situation potentially in Iraq, an Iranian nuclear program, a North Korean nuclear program, and so forth, whether Congress and the American people are going to say, hey, we're here for another five or ten years. We're prepared to see American casualties grow. We're, continued, we're prepared to continue to spend four or five billion dollars a month. I'm not sure that he's going to have that sort of domestic support, at least unless there's progress to point to. Mm. Richard Haas, as always, thanks for your expertise.